Good evening, everybody, and welcome to this, the latest of our Big Tent live events brought to you by Torch through the Humanities Cultural Programme here in Oxford, itself one of the founding stones for the new Stephen A. Schwartzman Centre for the Humanities. Tonight's conversation is a special double bill. And I'll explain my, what I mean by that as we go through. As you'll know, if you're here, this is a conversation tonight between Ayan Nushkin and Katie Mitchell, and I'll introduce them in turn. Ariane Nushkin, first of all, I'll wait until she comes on screen. Hello, Ariane. Ariane Nushkin is founder and director of the Théâtre du Soleil in Paris. A few words about you before we start. Since 1964, she's produced a range of extraordinary shows. Spectacle in French, and the word is lovely. Experiments in community, interventions into a wide range of debates, exploring and extending the meaning of political action on and off stage, and the limits of the human capacity to love, to experience terror, oppression, but also joy, and to tell stories across time and between cultures. Drawing on all manner of theatrical forms, the Théâtre du Soleil works in and from a transformed munitions factory or storehouse on the edges of Paris where it embodies the ideal of public theater. Exploring the practical craft of Japanese no, kabuki, bunraku, and other forms of theater, Indian katakali, European theater from the Greeks, through Molière, Shakespeare, through to contemporary work, in collaboration with Hélène Sixoup, Jean-Jacques Lemaitre, and all the other makers from the collective that is the Théâtre du Soleil, Ariane's work changes lives. She holds honorary doctorates from this university, and the Roma Tre University. She was awarded the Golden Lion for Lifetime Achievement in 2007 by the Viennese Biennale, as well as the 2019 Kyoto Prize, which we're celebrating with her today. It's a double act because the other tremendous uh, interlocutor in this conversation is Katie Mitchell, and I'll wait until Katie comes on camera as well. Hello, Katie. Katie's work is well known to audiences across the globe. In a career spanning 30 years, she's directed over 100 shows, including text-based theater, opera, installations, and multimedia work. From her early days as an assistant director with Payne's Plow and the Royal Shakespeare Company, to more recent shows uh, such as La Maladie de la Mort, created at the Théâtre des Bouffes du Nord in Paris, and Orlando at Berlin's Schaubühne, which, with which she has a continuing uh, relationship, the Schaubühne. Mitchell has become renowned, renowned for bold and innovative productions, pushing at the boundaries of theatrical form, character and story, and also theatrical process. Working like Ariane with classic texts, and we might even explore some of the texts that you've worked on in common uh, over the course of this conversation, as well as with contemporary writers, Katie has collaborated with the Royal Opera House, the National Theatre, the RSC, and the Royal Court, as well as theatres across Europe. In other words, we already see a difference between these two giants of the theater, one who moves around between lots of different places and one who, as it were, sits still and makes things and then takes them on the road. Katie has done the honor of being the first visiting fellow in theater for us here at the Humanities Cultural Program in Oxford and regular visitors to the big tent will know that we've had a good few enlightening, engaging and often thrilling conversations with theater makers of various kinds from around the world in this past year. But I said tonight was a double bill because as well as having these two people, brilliant theatre makers, women both of the theatre, in conversation tonight, the discussion is also being presented in partnership with the Kyoto Prize at Oxford. And tonight's event is the end of the second day of Oxford celebration of this award to Ariane. To explain what the prize is about and to set this discussion in a bit of context, we're going to show a very short film uh, after which the conversation proper will begin. Now, I should say that because we're on Zoom, the film might be a little bit um, décalé. Uh, the, the, the image and the sound might be a little bit separated, but we're going to play it anyway and hope for the best. And we'll join Ariane and Katie after the film is finished for the conversation proper. Thank you. The Kyoto Prize was founded by Kazuo Inamori in Japan as a prize that would celebrate some of the best achievements in science, in the arts and philosophy and in technology. 
It's about 100 million yen, that's nearly a million dollars, and it's awarded in Kyoto each year. The Kyoto Prize laureates have included people like Jane Goodall, known to most people for her work on chimpanzees and primates, Akira Kurosawa, the incredible Japanese filmmaker, or Martha Nussbaum, the extraordinary American political philosopher. Here at the Blavatnik School of Government, we partner with the Kyoto Prize to celebrate it, to bring the Kyoto Prize winners here to the heart of Oxford University, because they enable us not just to hear about the cut of art and philosophy, but to invite all our colleagues from other parts of Oxford, from Oxford's high schools, from other universities. Kazuo Inamori. And that's what the prize does each year. It brings together excellence in all of these domains. The Blavatnik School of Government is a department of Oxford University with a mission to improve government around the world. It's to help people learn how to serve, to lead, to govern with a clear sense of who they're serving and why. I was so excited to see the latest Kyoto Prize laureates. James Gunn, the astrophysicist, Ayan Nushkin, the theatre director, and Ching Tang, whose research brings us things like the OLED screen. But both Oxford scholars and the Kyoto laureates are animated by a thirst for knowledge, an energy and a commitment always to improve, never to be satisfied. And that's what makes excellence. The University of Oxford is a deeply international institution. We have partnerships across the world. We always have. We accepted our first international student in the year 1169, and we have been welcoming students ever since. The mission of the Quixote Prize is the very same mission that animated the founders of this university almost 900 years ago. A commitment to excellence, a commitment to using that excellence for the betterment of society. These values of humility and service, but also of outstanding excellence, are exactly the values that we hope to reinforce in every student that walks through the door. Okay, um, Zoom is always more complicated than one wants it to be. Um, and actually, it's a good way of uh, beginning this conversation between the two of you because I have the privilege of knowing both of your different ways of doing theater. Um, and um, I'm wondering, really just to start with this last year, um, if we can, and then we can sort of go backwards and sideways and around and so on. Um, Ariane, what has the Soleil been doing this last year during lockdown? How have you stayed alive, uh, kept <laughs> theater alive? Um, do you have thoughts about yeah this last year and 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 the sort of the matter of theatre that that you've been engaged in? We were lucky, um, actually much luckier than many people because when the lockdown started in France, um, we we were supposed to start rehearsing, not performing, so. Well, of course, we didn't. We didn't come. We didn't start rehearsing at that moment because there was the lockdown, and we, we it would have been impossible. But still, we 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 well, we I was sick, so I caught the COVID. So so, but uh, let's say about two months later or two months and a half, the lockdown was opened, and we could work. So we had the, we had this place. We had a a, a plan, a project. So we, we, we kept on working as much as we can, as we could, um, in spite of some interruption, of course, for sanitary reasons or not. So I, I feel we've been very lucky. It's uh, we, because um, not working during that period for us, I think would have been really uh, very dangerous, very dangerous mm -hmm. for everybody. I think it is, it was. Mm -hmm. So and Katie, we, we, we're, we're producing our next play. Mm -hmm. We were at one moment hoping to start in June, 
And then the conditions would be financially impossible for us. We can't, the Théâtre du Soleil needs to have a full house. Mm -hmm. can't, we can't start with one third of the house. So we decided we'll start in September and um, hoping that at that moment, the, the, even if it's not finished, it will be better. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Katie, how have you survived the last six months to a year? Well, all my work was cancelled. Um, and so I started uh, teaching. And so I had a fantastic time actually learning a huge amount from the younger generation. And uh, I started writing, writing some books, and then planning work around the issue of climate change, both sort of in terms of content and also sustainable, new sustainable models for working on climate change, which is, I think, the next big thing we're all going to probably encounter. Um, so that's, that's been my, my time has been with the young and they've taught me a great deal. And uh, I feel really blessed for that time. Um, but I've not done any directing and, and also it's been quite, quite nice. I'm a mum, so it's quite nice to be at home and not have an international career, to be honest. Do the cooking, do the cleaning, looking after my lovely daughter. Yeah. Best thing in the world. Yeah. Well, two things I'd like to draw out more there. One, the climate change question, which I know exercises Ariane as well, and we might think about that in a bit more detail. But maybe we could start with teaching. We're in a university here, Oxford University. You have both had experience of Oxford University. We might come back to that at a certain moment as well. But I didn't want to start with nostalgia or with that moment. But um, perhaps we can think about teaching because I know, um, so you, Katie, have been teaching pretty intensively through this last uh, year, but also have a longer track record really of teaching and indeed writing about the craft. Um, Ariane, how do you teach? What do you do? Is teaching something that you, I mean, I know there's the Ecole Nomade, but perhaps you could explain a little bit more about how one learns to do what the Theatre du Soleil does? I, or whether, actually, yeah. Yeah, actually, I, I don't think I would use for myself the, the word teaching because I'm not sure I'm teaching. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. I, actually, I'm not sure I'm teaching when I think I'm teaching. <laughs> but so, Finally, I, I stopped thinking I, that I'm teaching and I just say, all right, well, if you're interested to, to, to see how we work, let's share one week, two weeks, or sometimes three weeks. And the actors and I will try to share with you a, a I don't think I would, even there to use a method, although I think there is a method in a way, but to use, let's say, how we start in the morning and how we hope to end in the evening, meaning having lived through at least a few minutes of theater. Um, so, so I'm not sure that's called teaching. I think that's called inviting people to to share an experience. And then, as Katie said, of course, the, 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 the learning is reciprocal. C'est réciproque. Mm -hmm. C'est vrai que it's true that if we do an Ecole Nomade in India or, or in England, or the, 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 the young people, because they are mostly young people who are coming there, sometimes they are experienced actors, but let's say very few, rather young people, sometimes totally unaware of what is theatre, which was the case in, not, not in Oxford, but it was the case in, in India or in, sometime in Chile. Or they, they just come because they, they want to know what theatre is. And of course, they won't learn what theatre is, but they will learn, they will see with us what Théâtre du Soleil is. Mm -hmm. which is one theatre, it's one theatre among thousands of others. Mm -hmm. So, en fait, je, je dis, là je vais peut-être être en français, oui, oui, oui. Je, je crois que je, je commence toujours, ça bon, qui veut faire un peu de théâtre avec moi Voilà, en fait, c'est le, le, 
C'est la, la base, en fait, de, de ces écoles nomades. OK. So the école nomade, in other words, the nomadic school or the wandering school, which is a kind of workshop-like experience of what it is to work with Ariane and company, starts with the, the question, who'd like to do a bit of theatre with us? Or mm. not so much, uh, yeah, not for us or like us, just do some theatre with us. Um, okay. And having been a privileged uh, participant and observer of one of these écoles nomades, I know that one of the things that happens is that, that it's about what you call a proposition. In other words, come on then, let's see what happens if this happens. So it's under the sign of kind of what if and, and if, if this then. Uh, uh, and I wonder, Katie, how that, so we're going to be exploring similarities as well as differences here. I know that, Katie, you teach in a university sometimes uh, on courses um, for directors. Um, that's a very different mode, I imagine, from what Ariane's talking about. Well, yeah. If, uh, sadly, if someone's doing a, a master's or an MA or a BA, that what they do has to be markable, which means that you have to be able to give them grades, which sort of, and they have to be able to understand their grades. So it 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 requires a more systemic uh, a system to um, to teach. But the other thing is, that I think maybe we're approaching the same problem, but from different points of view. Mm -hmm. So. Um, in, in my country, I don't know how it is in France, the, the theatre scene is dominated by a group of white university educated cis men. And they hold the culture because they don't talk about skills. And so it's seen in a way as a craft of mystery. So what, what I enjoy doing is sort of demystifying it and breaking, breaking down what directing is one of masses and thousands of systems breaking it down into sort of like skills that anyone irrespective of their background their upbringing their education can use just like a, a sort of tools like a hammer and a chisel so um that's what i really enjoy doing demystifying what i do so that it can invite in people from many many different identity groups and backgrounds into the theater practice and sort of change the theater practice because Maybe, um, maybe we share that sort of ideology. You wouldn't call it an ideology, though. I don't <laughs> think. But, but I think may, maybe, maybe if I, as a young person, sort of encountering your practice, I could say that there's a there's a sort of political force behind it, um, which which is about sort of fairness and openness, and it being a practice that is open for everyone to to do and they're open for everyone to watch, irrespective of, of where they come from um, or what identity group they belong to. So uh, I like teaching because I like to demystify and give people hammers. <laughs> That's what I like oh, doing. No, it's, it's, je trouve que uh, I think that uh, you talking about tools is, is, is perfectly true. Because after all, that's what we need. I was going to ask you, Katie, but when you said what demystifying directors, directing, I was going to ask you, yes, but what is directing? Do you really know what is directing? Because I wouldn't be quite, I mean, if I was asked the question, what is directing? At the beginning of my life, 50 years ago, I think I would have answered, well, it's to tell actors how to come in on stage, what to do. And, But of course, it is not that. What is it? So I, I've learned. Well, tell me, what is it? Is it oh, just listen. making it possible? I mean, is it just I think there believing, is believing them so much that this that they then believe themselves what they're doing? Is it is it I'm, receiving their visions or giving them visions? Gosh, I, I don't know. I, I think your practice is really focused on acting. Yes. And I think that my practice is focused on acting plus. So I, I think probably the difference between us in, in a celebratory way is that I'm as interested in sound and music and lighting and scenography as I am in acting. And um, so I would, I like you, I mean, you can't finally say what it is directing, but you can say, maybe some of the components, you have to have certain certain skills 
to lead people, to organize them, to inspire them. And then you have to have some aesthetic skills, some oral skills. And, and in a way, maybe it's a bit cheeky for you to say that you don't know what it is because you no, no. are mistress of skill. So your work is unbelievably skilled and crafted and, and it's like breathtakingly good. And I can tell you, break it down and, and say where your skill lies. So I don't believe you when you say you don't know what it is. No, it, 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 maybe I'm not say I'm not being modest. Contrary, I'm not being modest. I swear. I think, of course, that we have acquired that I have acquired through my life a certain pratique, as we say, a certain skill. Mm -hmm. And oh, I also think that I was lucky enough <clears throat> to choose. Uh, a craft that I was able to do. Hmm? It's very, I, what the luck I had when I decided in Oxford that, I, that theater would be my life, I was just lucky enough to be able to accomplish ce souhait. J'ai souhaité. Yeah. Yes. J'aurais pu me tromper. Il y a des tas de gens qui veulent faire de la musique et qui ne sont pas, au fond, qui mettent 10 ans à s'apercevoir. And they want to be musicians, and they take years to finally realize that they won't be, that they're not real musicians. Oh, so this did not happen to me. So I'm not being modest. But it is true that sometimes I don't know why today, for example, something beautiful happened thanks to two actors, one actress and one actor. Why did it happen today? Why didn't it, did it not happen the day before? What yeah. did I say? What did they say? What did one of their friends, what, were, what was in my eye? Why? There is a mystery and I, there is a mystery. Yes, but that's very interesting that you don't think there is a mystery. I think there is a mystery and I, I don't feel, and it's not modesty, I promise, mm -hmm. that, but I don't, I can't, comment dire? It's as if I was, if, if I denied this mystery, it would be bad luck for me. I mean, it would mean bad, bad luck. Mm -hmm. Ce serait un sacrilège de ne pas mm -hmm. accepter que la naissance d'une émotion au théâtre est encore plus mystérieuse que la, la naissance d'une émotion devant un tableau magnifique. Bon, je traduis. Uh, oui, s'il te plaît. OK. So it would be sacrilegious for me not to recognize that the birth of some kind of emotion on stage is different from the birth of an emotion in a spectator when they're looking at a painting. Encore um, plus mystérieuse. Uh, sorry, it's more mysterious. Yeah, that there's a mis mystery uh, in the interaction. I think you're uh, you're speaking about on stage. Uh, that's different well, from, say, a finished work of art. Um, uh, J'admets tout à fait ce que Katie dit, que, que par exemple, quand un peintre me, me fait venir les larmes aux yeux, comme un, parfois, c'est vraiment la, son, sa, son, son, son savoir-faire, son talent, son, son, voilà, sa science. Yeah. Mm -hmm. sa science et la science aussi de sa main d'ailleurs pas seulement la science de sa de sa tête mm -hmm. mais la science de sa main mm -hmm. je dois avouer que moi quand je vois naître des choses magnifiques devant moi je ne suis pas modeste j'y suis pour quelque chose I know that I'm je it's been it's, I'm comment est-ce qu'on dit j'y suis pour quelque chose Wes I know that it's important that I'm there or that I I'm part of voilà. what's happening I I'm am part, part of, of it Yep. I'm part of it. But, il y a un mystère. Yeah. Et ce mystère est fait, évidemment, de, du projet lui-même, des hommes et des femmes qui sont sur scène ou de ceux, celles et ceux qui sont en train de regarder la répétition ce jour-là et dont le regard <coughs> est encore plus bienveillant, plus, plus fiévreux, plus, plus, plus fertile. Il y a un mystère humain dans le théâtre que je qui est pour moi magnifique et insondable. 
OK, I'm going to Maybe. translate again a little bit. Yeah. I won't try and translate all of that, but where where it's really great. The, 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 the différent here, the point of difference is about the mystery. Um, Katie, I'm not sure how much of that your, your, I mean, your French can follow, but for the audience that, it, that can't, it's it's um, I am absolutely not claiming that she doesn't know what she's doing in some sense of, of amateurishness or uh, uh, that, that her skill is is not significant. It's rather wanting to keep hold of the idea that there is something mysterious that happens um, when people are watching other people intensively um, with bienveillance, with a, with a kind of degree of, of, of care and attention to the thing that's unfolding in front of them, um, which is mysterious to the degree that you can't calculate in advance that this is going to happen on this particular day or that particular day. Um, and that there's still there's there's a mystery in the I don't know you didn't use the word chemistry Ian but perhaps you can talk about the chemistry I mean it's a physical thing it's about the it's about what happens physically in that space so are we are, are, I wonder if actually well I'll let Katie respond before I wonder if there's some triangulation of this point of course uh, any more scientific position which I hold will has to allow for its opposite so of course I have been a witness either in a rehearsal room or in an audience of miraculous intensity. But the fact is that I think I'm, I'm maybe more banal. I just think, well, what happens if it isn't there and the people are still paying? So I have to construct something that is finely constructed so that yeah. even, if the, even if the intense event doesn't happen, there is something there because there's a sort of morality in directing which is, and it's the morality of the fact that what we're doing is monetized. So uh, of course you, you hope for the extra layer, which you're going to call a mystery, and I'm going to call it the extra layer, but it's, it's a bit of a holy grail. It's a bit uneven. And when, when it's not present for whatever reason, there has to be something else to be presented. And that's, that something else is held up by skill and craft, which you know, as well as I do. But of course, you hope for the extra layer. You hope for the yeah. extra, extra layer, but you can't rely on it. So Can it's an unstable yeah. factor. Yeah. Sorry, Katie, there's a little misunderstanding. I'm not speaking of the miraculous in public, I'm speaking miracles uh, i'm speaking of the miracles during the work miracles wow. that of course have to be kept and yeah. redone every evening which is right. uh, <laughs> there there is the craft okay but the creation the creation the 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 the, accouchements, the, the, the birth i mean the giving yep. birth of of an actor or an actress the, the moment where suddenly it is more than true. It's true, but it's something more than true, meaning theater. Mm -hmm. For me, is still an, um, a growl, a beautiful mystery that I, that I sometimes cannot, cannot explain. And and do you think that's what keeps you doing it? Uh, maybe, maybe. Is it is there a sort of addiction to this? Sort Sorry, of, is it, is it like a sort of addiction to this unstable, oh, yes. un, unconstructable? You can never know whether it will be present or not. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. I think it's an addiction. You you. I think you you choose you've chose your word very well. It, it has something with, with addiction because it's because it is never the same yeah. because it has to be done every day again because there's, for me, in spite of my several skills, it's a blank page. When I start a, a, a rehearsal, I never know if today theater is going to be willing to, to come to our you know, to, to come on stage, if the, the god of the theatre is going to be there or not. Um, and I know it's going to be either a delicious fight or a very uh, terrible fight to, to, to conquer, to conquer pleasure, um, 
intelligence, light, poetry, and sometimes everything is there. And, and how did, when the evolution of your work as a, an artist, I say an artist, not a director, because I think that's a more comfortable description for you. But as you were there, was there a moment when you realized how important this element was to your work? Or have you always known that this was the thing? Uh, no, that's a, no, you're right, you're right. I don't think at the beginning I, I knew that. I think at the beginning, I, I knew, as I said, I was, I thought I was for several, well, very few years, but I was the type of saying, I have to know everything in advance, put it to the actors and they will do what I, I tell. And, 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 um, and very, very quickly, I realized that, well, it was so... Dead. The, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so interested in, in in what kept you going, you know, because it's like it, it's it's such a long career. I mean, it's really, really long. And also you've kept going at a very high level, philosophically yeah. and intellectually. You, your level is very high. You don't dip. And um, I, I'm really interested in how in your sort of intellectual stamina. And, and your quest for uh, to push what the form is, I just think it's 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 amazing. And and also the fact that you're a woman doing it is really amazing, because you're you're pretty alone. That there's no, no well, you are pretty alone. No, yeah, yeah. To tell tell me another senior female artist of your status, of your brilliance, that's alive. There is oh, one. Ah, that's alive. Come on, well, you're there. Um, Lovely, but no. <laughs> no, but seriously, yeah, I, no, I just think it's terrible. Words go out of my mouth. Um, <clears throat> I, I suppose my point is this: my point is that there's something about the inquiry that you're involved in, which is both political, existential, philosophical, and practical. That is, it seems to be an inquiry that is without end for you you know it's of such incredible interest to you and so when when I listen to you talking I'm thinking you're as excited as a 25 year old directing student you have the same energy you know in how you're thinking about maybe maybe that's maybe I'm like that because I know because I feel that I still, well, it's impossible that to I feel that I feel that theater is not is not in rien n'est acquis. Nothing is is Given. is uh, yeah. uh, uh, see uh, quiet. Given. I mean, nothing. Yeah. In English, you, the, the phrase is "nothing's given." There's nothing given about it. There's nothing obvious in advance. No, I, mean, ah, I think there are many things that are given, but okay. you, it's ah, okay. not given for, every, for, for, all, for, for always. Well, okay. It's given sometime and then you can lose it. Okay. And, and, and also... Um, okay, maybe you can't take anything yeah, for granted. Je, no, but I think Katie, you, 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 you're not as serious as that. You can't tell me that you're not excited by the idea of playing with actors in a rehearsal. I mean, it, what is more delicious than playing with people? <laughs> what is more? It, it's of course nice, but I but I really like playing with you know the work of my sound designer, my composer, my actors. I, so for me, I like I like for me it's it's a bit beyond Ooh. the actors. So I, I really like the. But I like that too. I I swear I like that too. The interplay. I like making the sets. I like lights. Yeah. I like, but of course I like theater music because I'm very yeah, very lucky to work with Jean Jacques. Mm -hmm. But but um, but so, I think I do think are we are we really so much? I don't different. think we are. No 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 no. We're not we're not really because no, no, I'm going to try and I'm going to triangulate this with a memory. So I'm when I sure. came. When I came to the Théâtre de Soleil um, one time and I was watching the Dernier Caron Serail, so the, the piece that was, um, you know, a version of the Odyssey set in Sangat refugee camp, there's a moment from that piece that stays with me, you know, and I, I actually dream about it. And it's the moment when they're crossing the river, Ayan, if you remember. 
Um, and, you know, the, the theatre student in me goes, oh, they're doing the Brechtian thing with the river and the cloth. And I know all about that. I've done that many times. But what really transformed it actually was the sound, was the sound of the helicopters, was the sound and the incredible sound system that, that you have in that space um, that, that meant that you were just physically transported through sound, as well as all the, all the tricks, all the games, all the play that was going on on stage and all the incredible intensity of the actors that, that Katie and you have just been talking about. It was also the sound architecture of, of, of embodied, of just throwing people into the sound of the river, first of all, and the sound of, and the, sound of the helicopter. So I think it's, it's not, I don't want people to start thinking that somehow sound and, 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 set, and the fact that everybody in the Danica is on, is on, on wheels all the time, that they're, they're moving all the time. So that the, the, the sort of, the craft of theater making beyond uh, character, beyond performance as a sort of um, uh, an actor led thing is absolutely fundamental to what Ariane does as course. And I, I mean, I know Katie knows that and she's sort of pushing, pushing an argument to see where it goes to some degree. Um, but I just thought I'd, I'd put that into the picture because of course, you know, you, you, you have a whole team of people working at the Soleil to make, to make the thing as, as physically engrossing as possible. Um, and the other thing that is really good is the food is very wow. good. That's, <laughs> that's the thing that I really remembered. I thought, fucking hell, the food is good <laughs> here too, as yes. well as the art. And that was like, just such a great thing to, to, to notice that stomachs are as important yeah. as eyes and ears. And yeah. I, I, yeah. So, I so loved that. And also, I mean, it's such an immersive experience for those who, who may not have been to the cartoucherie. I mean, it's like two, three enormous, uh, amazing warehouses and mm -hmm. fantastic food at the bar. And then you normally go through some amazing installation and then you're out in a performance space. I mean, it's, it's a combination of visual art and theater making and cookery. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like, it, it's like if you, you couldn't really just say to me, you're excited about being with actors in a room because you, you. No, oh, but it has to do, of course, of course. No, but I'm saying that plus, plus that I'm excited. <clears throat> I'm excited also to speak with the cook and mm -hmm. to decide what we're going to do for the, for the, for the public. I'm, I'm excited about nearly everything, but but uh, the, the miracle of, of the art comes through a triangle, I would say, which is the actor, the music, and, and the light, plus the set, and plus all the people who, when I ask them to do something, in general, they do much better than what I have asked. Always. Always. So, that's so, always the case. But the thing is, I think directing is about delegating. So for me, that's yes. the thing. It's about it's about creating a space and then some parameters and then delegation so that everyone else can be really creative. That, that's yes. the kind of thing that's really delicious about it. It's not actually yes. telling people so much, but it's delegating. Exactly. Yes, it is. And You're right. And it's also <clears throat> asking them to do much better than what you are asking. It's, and, and which is the case most of the time, most yeah. of the time. You say something and they come back with better. a suggestion, which is yeah. you, so much, much, much more fertile, much more inspiring than what you, you painfully design on a piece of paper or... Yeah. So that's... Maybe so, organizers of other people's creativity. You know, in the end, yeah, maybe it is. we're organizing. That's I like it the most when I'm not really leading the room where other people are doing their thing. You know, someone's acting, someone's doing design, someone's practicing something. And I'm very quietly sat there creating a climate, but I'm not telling anyone anything. And then then I don't know how you feel. Then I feel very happy. Yeah, you're right. This is how it evolutes. I mean, it, that's how exactly that's how it it evolves, mm -hmm. is that? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, how it evolves. Uh, yeah. And probably also because you're not uh, you're not uh, old, Katie, which I am, and so an old director or an, an old director of a company of a group has to think what's going to happen after uh, after something happens to me. 
with whether it's death or just weakness or just impossibility. So, so this exercise of delegation, as you say, uh, increases. It, it, it's delegation is is more is is um, part. I mean, it's as you say, it grows. It grows every every place. Mm. There's more delegation. And, and right, what, absolutely. What do, you think, do you think about your legacy? Not in a grand way, but but what what would you no, like? No, if- I think. Yes, I, I'm. I'm not. I'm not thinking of a legacy. I think. I, I think. I'm. I'm thinking. I'm sorry. I think of one word. I. I meant the when you talk about the delegation, the process of delegation, and then moving beyond or through. What What do you hope for in that process? Well, I want the actors, and I mean the company. I don't want them to be dispossessed. Comment est-ce qu'on dit dépossédé? Dispossessed. It's dispossessed fine. of their of their tools of their tools of their home of their the, the way they they built that place i mean if this place is what it is it's because these people who are still in it and some others before and some other before built it in a way and and made it and made it what it is and known and famous and beautiful and so my 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 worry for the moment is all right, but I don't want them to be dispossessed of that. I want mm-hmm. them to be able to show that they can go on without me, mm-hmm. which is, I know, and that will prove you that I'm not modest, which is difficult. That's right. I know it, it is difficult, nice. but um, we have you know, I, I, that's now I've been thinking, we've been thinking, some of us, for, for several years, so we are preparing that. Um, I don't, I don't want to, to, to I don't want the, to see the, if I to see or not see, but I don't want the theatre to, like, to fade or, or, dis, or, or um, disappear, chuck like this, unless, unless it deserves to, unless it deserves. Yeah. Huh? Unless it's becoming not worthy enough, and then it has to stop. But I'm not sure it will deserve to to stop. I'm sure it, it's something interesting will continue, something beautiful, and which will be open for other directors. Yeah, I'll just come. I'll just come and take it over. All right. <laughs> That's it. But but see. <laughs> Ariane, just say one thing. What was it like right at the beginning? Because we're talking about yeah. the end yeah. prematurely as well, because you look very yeah. robust. And um, yeah. so what, what was it like right at the beginning going to that site? Is the Bois de Vincennes? Ah. Is it? What, what yes. was, what was, was that was one of them. That was, a, that was a, a blessing that came. There was, a, um, we did a play called 1789. And um, we didn't know where to, it not even perform, but not even the rehearse. And once a, a friend of mine who was Christian du Pavillon, and he was uh, missioned by Jacques Lang to make a, a, an inventaire who was- uh, An inventory or a, a yeah. A, do, do we inventory. draw up a list? Yeah. Yeah, to draw up a list of all the good places that could become cultural places at that time. And one day I was complaining, say, oh, we need a place. It's becoming very difficult. And he said, well, you should go. I think you should go to see the cartoucherie because the army is leaving it. And I've told that story thousands of times. But so I took, you know, I took my little car and tried to find where the Vincennes, I was lost. I took, I went to the Parc Floral and no, 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 just a second. They're going to close my, my window and they mustn't. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay. No, 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 please don't play. It's where the light comes from is through that window. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the lighting designer uh, didn't know, yeah. And, um, so I went and I saw these buildings. 
And there was a little soldier in front, and he he was, uh, you know, il balayé. He was sweeping. He was sweeping. And I said, what are you doing? He said, well, I'm closing the, the I'm closing this place this afternoon. I'm the last one. This The army is gone. And really, he was the last one, and he was supposed to close the place. So I said, ah, ha, ha, ha. all right, well, I'll be back. And I phoned my friends, and we put the little belongings of the Terre du Soleil at that day, and we, we squat. We went in immediately. And the little soldier, of course, he didn't mind, he didn't mind at all. And so when he left, we were inside. This was a sort of uh, also a miracle. And then I went to the city of Paris. There was no mayor at the, at the time. And I saw a woman, Janine Alexandre Debray, who was the mother of Regis Debray. And she was wonderful because I said, listen, we, we, get, we got in the cartoucherie but we want to be legal, we want to pay rent, but we are there. And she said, but you know, I don't have any, any right on that place, but all right. And she gave me a little paper with a little French flag on top, which looked quite administratively uh, important, saying I allow Miss Ariane Nushkin to be in the cartoucherie. Voilà. And, and then, started two years of struggle to stay there because everybody all the, everybody wanted us to go away. And luckily, 1789 was a, bill, a big um, hit, as you say. So we were, it, it was becoming difficult to throw us out, really. So that's how we stayed. So we, in a way, we, 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 we peacefully occupied the place before... Before it was, it would have been destroyed. If we hadn't been there, the whole thing would have been destroyed. There are also lots of other buildings, aren't there? Yes, Where yes. Lots of other artists are as well. Exactly. Okay. Yes, other other theatres now, theatre yeah. and uh, uh, and the dance, dance. Yeah, cool. uh, centre founded by Caroline Carlson. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah. and otherwise, there's uh, one, two, three. Yes, four, four theatre. So it's Can I a ask big, you a big question then, Katie, on the back of that story, which is um, just to kind of, again, open up a bit of a difference between you. You've never run a building, as far as I'm aware. You've I never, did, uh, I did, as I, did. I said at the beginning, has, has that never appealed to you, to have a kind of company uh, and uh, to be I mean, part of... If someone said run a building like the cartoucherie, like Ariane does, I, I jumped at it. But most people say run an organization which is a patriarchal structure with p politics and power and impossibility. And I'm just not interested in it. So I think I tried, I, I run the other place, which is a small studio space yep. in Stratford at the Royal Shakespeare Company. And I modeled it on the cartoucherie. I tried, it's my little micro <laughs> cartoucherie, you know, it failed horribly, but I tried my best. Um, but it was like, how can you have a sort of optimistic, socialist, feminist, incendiary environment inside this sort of, you know, very sort of patriarchal mainstream traditional structure, it, it was impossible. Um, but no, I've always, I've always wished that I had a home. And when I think about what a home could be, I think about the cartoucherie, because I think it's like the perfect home. I also like the fact that it's surrounded by woods. I, I like the fact that it's a sort of floating somewhere in a, in a sort of hinterland. It's not in a city, it floats somewhere. And I like the fact that other people are around in buildings doing other things. Mm -hmm. I would feel that better mm -hmm. company. The trees and other people making things and women so i want to talk yes. about two more things bring two more things into this conversation and i'll signal them now one is gender and the other is ecology and the and the environment and so on um uh ariane it is getting a little bit darker in your room but are, are we okay to carry on for a bit longer I, we're, I put, we're certainly happy i, I, I put some more light voila, voila. we put some more lights so okay. is it all right yeah, cool. yeah katie's gone into the dark now no, I'm matching um, Ariane. I'm not going to stay oh, I see. Okay. Ariane. Okay. Uh, Juliana is putting some light. Thank you, Juliana. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's talk about women. So, Katie, um, uh, or at least let's talk about how how 
uh, earlier on, Katie, you were saying, look, there's nobody like Ariane in terms of a woman in this position of uh, of, of running, well, not just running, of, of, of sustaining a career in theatre for this long, and I don't want to even use the word career, a life in theatre this long. Um, how do I put this question? Um, I don't want to say, is it harder for women? Because it manifestly is. Um, but what is it that makes it let's put it positively, what is it make it possible for the two of you to work that might make it harder for other women to do what you're doing? Go oh, Ariane. <laughs> uh, well, again, my experience is uh, strangely different from... Uh, I'm, I'm the sort of person who did not realize that being a woman was a problem for a long time. Um, I had a wonderful father. I had a very, very loving father. And in a way, it, it saved me for a while from even, even imagining that being a woman would be a problem. <laughs> Then, of course, one day I realized, but I realized it through others, uh, uh, others human beings experience, women, other women experience. Yeah, as if I had been, I don't know, blinded by a, probably a lack of imagination, an enormous deal of luck, not having met any dirty, macho, having had very nice school friends, I mean, boys, um, I don't know. Then of course, I started hearing things <laughs> and understanding that maybe some of the difficulty that I've had, maybe was that, but I didn't want to admit that because I, I, I took I took it. it I said, "Oh no, but that that's, I don't want any excuse." Mm -hmm. You see, I don't want any. I don't want to have any excuse. So, and I chose, of course, do when I when I uh, found it because I was the at the initiative of the of the Terre du Soleil, mm -hmm. but I. Of course, I didn't. I didn't go to ch and choose the the worst man. I <laughs> I chose the best friends that I had, mm. and um, so the beginning was for me was uh, normal. I mean, I, it started a bit later. And as I said, it's it's when I was, I realized that women were a, a political cause, as as uh, as much, even if not more, than colonialism, uh, uh, racism, etc., which I was very very uh, aware of. But I was not. I had not been aware of that problem, which, which I should have had, which I should have been aware of, being myself a woman. So, it well, it took me time. It took my feminism my simple feminism, my normal feminism, it took time to, for my feminism to become angry. I was not hung, angry until suddenly I became angry because I saw things which made me angry. Are you still but angry now? Sometime, sometime, I'm sorry. Are you yes. angry now still? Um, yes, I'm angry, but not, I'm not sure. I'm not 
I'm not ferociously angry. Quietly angry. Yes, I'm quietly angry. I'm angry and I can be very, you know, brutal or even physically sometimes against one person against one man or, or sometimes against one woman who, who is an allied to that camp because they are. But I'm not angry towards men in general. I, as I said, I, I have, I had in my life, I have been protected, helped, um, and um, by very good, good man with by Ben who, who really loved me as a person. I, I'm not speaking of love, uh, sexual love. I'm speaking of love of, by people who wanted good for me, who wanted my, qui voulait mon bien, voilà. Who wanted the best for me, who wanted, yeah, yeah. Yes. I have that, so so they save mankind for me, <laughs> you know. These people. I'm not. I'm not ferociously angry against men. In fact, I like them as much as I like women. But certain, uh, I'm, I can be very violent against certain men. Sexist men. Yeah. Misogyne, vulgaire, méchant, mauvais, violent, crétin. If I can bring it back uh, to one particular scene, so in, in Chambranand, in, in a room in India. But, but may I ask, just as Wes, could, would you allow me to... Of course. Allow, uh, allow me to, to ask a question to, to Katie. Are you yeah. ah, okay. still ferociously angry to... Mankind? Well, like you, I didn't want to be a woman. So mm -hmm. I just to, to to be someone who made things. And I didn't I didn't like the label woman. I, I wanted to be a human being, really. But um and like you, it became very clear, maybe earlier than you, that mm -hmm. I, I was a, was going to, to have the problem of being a woman. And um, I, I think there's lots of great things about it, you know, biologically, what, what we're capable of, menstruating, having babies, menopause, a really amazing physical thing to sit inside a female body. That's really great. But it's not, it's not great to sit inside a female body in the societal structures. And so uh, when I first, when it first in encountered, I encountered it, I could not believe it was real. Sexism was coming at me. I, mm. I, I was just speechless. I, oh, you know, I, like you see, speechless. You didn't expect it, so no. it's like me. I didn't expect it. Absolutely, because I just sort of put my head down and I worked. And then when it came at me, it was unbelievable. And it it was directly at me, and I was speechless. But I was very changed by that. And um, and then I took a long time to reflect on it. And then I made Ooh. a decision, which is probably one of the best. Well, the two great decisions I've made in my life: one, to have a child, and two to use the word feminism and to, to say that I am a feminist. That was a really good decision. And I remember yeah. when I did it, I thought, fuck it, I'm gonna say it. And I know what will happen. I know the consequence, but I feel freer saying it. Yeah. And for me, feminism is about equality and fairness. Mm. And so mm. I'm standing up for fairness. So I, I exactly. used that word and it was a really great word. And then, then it, it calmed my anger a bit. And then of course, I'm now watching my daughter grow up and how horrible it is. So I'm mm -hmm. watching the world etch itself onto my daughter and that's making me angry again because it's like- But you're, like, you're right, I didn't use, I was at the beginning, I was saying, but I don't have to be feminist. I am a woman, so I'm feminist. And you're right, there's been a, a moment I, I would say thanks, actually, thanks to Ellen, Ellen Sixou. Yes. And one day she said, but you must 
use that, that word. You, no, you, you, she was saying, there are lots of women who are not feminist at all. Don't be stupid. Yeah. You, you, you must use the word. And, and you're right, I did use that word. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you're right. It's, it's really important, but it's really important that as senior artists, we use the word because it, mm. it, it calms things a bit. Um, but Ellen said to you, oh my God. Mm. Mm. Sorry. But no, you, you no, no, I didn't want to interrupt you. No, so you I was said going something. to talk about Ellen Sitsu, who's just yes. so amazing. Lucky you, you've got her as your friend. Oh my God. <laughs> I've just got her as a book. You know, I've got her as a book. You've got her as a friend. Oh my yes, God. Yes, she's a very dear friend. And um, well, you should, you could meet her. Come and you'll meet her. I'd love to. And she, and um, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes, but. I must say, because I, I have to be frank with you, sometimes there's there are some, I would say, directions of feminism which I don't follow. But this is going to be too too long a, a, de a debate. But I'd like to, to speak to you one day about that. I'm not. Um, there are several types of feminism. We're not united. Yeah. We're no. not all, totally united. No, we and maybe you and I are more influenced by second wave feminism from the 1970s. And now, of course, we're in fourth wave feminism. But the thing is that I think the best position is to welcome everything in. I, th I think, you know, I, that's my position. I just welcome all the different views for our inside the feminism movement in. And I just go, oh, well, it, it's not what I think, but that's a really interesting way of thinking, that's a new way of thinking, and to invite in all of the thinking. Because really, women haven't had much equality for more than about 100 years, so the whole movement's quite quite young. Yeah, so I think, I think it's really good to welcome they're not very, Are they really obliged, are we very really obliged to make the same mistakes that the men did? Are we obliged to? I, don't, I, I think we're not. not. We're not. No, I don't think we should. We're not obliged to be. We're not obliged to have a suddenly to have a, a, une pensée totalitaire ou, une, ou, ou, ou utiliser de la. Je ne suis pas sûre de ça. Voilà. Je ne suis pas sûre qu'on doit faire les mêmes erreurs que qu'on fait les Staliniens, les Maoïstes. Les. Je ne suis pas sûre. Nous yeah. n'avons pas besoin de suivre ce même chemin terrible. Yeah, but the thing is that it all comes down to one thing, doesn't it? Which is violence. Yeah, exactly. it just comes down to violence, and yeah. it's just there's a great. Are we obliged to? to, no. to we we, oh, we can choose not to be violent. That, that's exactly. That's Thank really, you. Yay! <laughs> great. Because we just don't think. I think a lot of women don't think that's a very good route. It's not a good no, route to resolving things. Um, so I think for me, it's the violence of male behaviour that I find the most upsetting be it psychological yes. or physical, or be it people who lead other people into war, or as you talk about totalitarian regimes. And I watched mm -hmm. my daughter, you know, today we were driving back in the car and there was the, the, the news and it was the bombing. And she said, what are they doing? Mom, why is the world built like this? And I said, well, I don't know, Edie, but it's not right. So it's not right. <laughs> That's the thing. Cool, we agreed now, you see? It's on the surface, go down a bit. We're just totally agreeing, Wes. It, the, the differences are decorative. Yeah. The similarities are yeah. deep. <laughs> I think that's right. Mm -hmm. All right. I wonder then, um, for the last 20 minutes or so of this discussion, if we might talk about the environment where we started. Uh, Katie, you talked right at the beginning about ecological catastrophe the uh i'm not sure you were use the word catastrophe but i i happen to know and we've talked in previous big tent uh sessions about your um we'll use the fancy term eco dramaturgy in other words both plays that um or theater that's engaged with the question of uh the history of man humankind on this planet but also that's trying to find ways of making theater that are more sustainable, more that don't do violence to nature, shall we say. Um, I wondered if uh, we might talk about a bit about that, just, just to see where that takes us in terms of 
Well, in terms of the young, you said that you spent this last year, Katie, learning from the young. And clearly one of the, the things that the young teach us is that the planet matters in ways that we might not have seen before, um, and or at least that, that we might not have been as aware of before. Well, the um, thing is that I think we were aware of it, though, Wes, you know, okay. I think, but the young make it more agonizing. It's not that they tell you about it, it's that it's more agonizing because they're gonna to have to live into it. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I think that's very painful. Mm -hmm. um, so I really like just, I don't know what you're feeling, Ariane, at the moment, but I'm really enjoying doing ecology and theatre in terms of the content of the shows, the form of the shows and making sure everything's sustainable. And um, I'm, I'm working with some fantastic young women um, young writers and theatre makers to come up with new forms of making theatre. I mean, I think it's going to be dreadful, probably, what we're doing. And it's going to be like the 1960s and Peter Brook's Empty Space again, you know, with a couple of stationary <laughs> bicycles powering the electricity. I don't think it's going to be great aesthetically, but I feel intellectually it's good to give it a go. So um, that's, that's, I think, where I'm going to put my energies for the next few years, I think. But how, how do you feel about that problem, Ariane? Oh, listening to you, I feel a bit ashamed because we're late. No, we are trying, as, as everybody, we are changing our lamps. We are changing, you know, we are, we, are, we are making a big effort to be better. Mm. And I think we are better. We are not, we are not spoiling as much uh, lights or, or, you know, but still, still, I'm not, I'm, I will not tell you that the play we're doing is, is going to be like the 70s and because there's a certain visual beauty that uh, I can't abandon. And, uh, and also, um, no, I mean, I'm not yet, we are not, yet there you we're not where you are yet but but i'm i'm still doing visual but are you yes but you see but yeah, i'm trying to are you to, to make a transition between my love of the visual beauty and the knowledge that something's got to change so i'm trying to up the ratio so i'm doing like five shows eco ecology and theater and two normal to see how it feels. Two naughty ones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Two right. Well, okay. That's right. That's, that, that, that I admit. But this, no, you're right. We, we'll have to, but we have to find solution to keep the beauty because otherwise the world is going to be very, very sad. No, it, 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 it's right. It, the thing is that you're right, of course. And even with nothing, we can make something very, very beautiful. Yeah. But I'm, I'm just interested in how far but, nothing can go. Yeah. And, and, and where do you find the beauty with very limited means, you know? So, uh, and I just, it's, 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 it's useful. I can do the experiment because I don't need to succeed anymore. You know, I, I don't need anything anymore to succeed or all of those things. So I can take the risk to make really boring, ugly theatre. <laughs> in, order, in, in order to to make to do the heavy lifting for everyone else, do you see what I mean? I'll just go and do the awful experiments so everyone go, oh, don't do it like her. She made such a mistake. We're going to do it in a more beautiful way. So I'm going to make some mistakes on everyone's behalf <laughs> and see where it goes. I like that. You're really radical. I like that. Um, no, but I mean, every moment of choice is, you know, if you, because you, you have to, when you dye a, 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 a piece of silk, you have to, where, where does that silk come from? That's right. Who, 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 who has woven, woven, woven yeah. it to Kikila Tisse? Yeah, who, who's woven it? Was, with, how old was the child in Thailand or in Bangladesh who did it? So... The, 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 the numbers of questions one have to, to ask oneself is, is enormous. And we should, at every, think, we, should we must ask ourselves these questions. The only thing is 
we can't ask ourselves all the questions at the same time because then it means that, um, all right, okay, well, I won't, won't buy that silk because it comes from there. Though, so, but anyway, every move we do brings progress and misery in another place. So, so one has we really. It's a. It's. I'm not saying we must not do it because we must take this very seriously but it is well it has it's, it's a question step after step and uh, i don't feel i'm not well i am not as courageous as you are for the moment I'm, i i i need some time to use something which probably it would have been better not to use it so yeah but that you, everyone moves at their own pace and I think, I think the thing about the problem, we all are facing the existential problem of it and everyone has their own relationship to it. I think what I'm noticing is that my work and my private life are much more porous because of it. So mm. it's just, I, I have to like, when, when I found about those uh, workshops in Bangladesh, I, and also because I sew a lot, so I make clothes and embroider and things like that, I really enjoy doing that. So the, the idea that these clothes are made in that awful circumstance meant that I just stopped buying new clothes. And I really live in my clothes until finally they fade and, and the material dissolves, at which point I know it's finished, my relationship with the clothing. Yes. Right. Uh, in the another room. point was similar because I do that too, but not because of, it, there's nothing ideological about that. It's just because I like old clothes clothes and uh, and uh, because I don't like going to shop for clothes so I'm ecological without you know without merit yeah that's on that on that, is, on that just, side just see it as merit <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's maritized it differently yeah yeah but, but to be serious I think I think we, I think you know as long Will as you, you know Frankly, are you the type of, of person who's really going to renounce going up, or going on, on a plane? You're, yeah, you're I've not have, I have not flown for nine years and I still have an international, so I travel by train. I will not go on a plane. I so stopped. you never go to, you, no. how did you go to America by I boat? Do, I don't go. I don't go because no. of that? I'm, yeah, because of that. I make it in the UK and someone else goes with it. But at the moment, I realize that that's very flawed. So I'm working with a, a theater in Switzerland on a touring model where no people or materials move between the cities. So we make it with one local group in one city and then we send a performance score by email and then a new director and new local actors make the show again. So I'm, I'm really interested. So are you saying that we are not going to travel anymore? No, you can do whatever you want. I'm not laying down any rules for you. It's just that it's no, not no, no. But, but but if you're doing it, it's because you're convinced that that's what has to be done, what should be done, and you're well, not telling me to do it because well, you're a nice woman. Who, no, but I, who, I, who, I, I'm, I'm not. But, I, why, but why would I do that? I traveling, just... traveling. Traveling, yeah, but you, you don't want your daughter to travel. I do, but the thing is that going by train is just so beautiful because, yes, of course, going by train, of course, or by maybe by balloon to America yeah. one day, go by, you know. go by boat, it's just slower. By boat, let's let's do let's okay, but let's do a move. <laughs> let's put again the traffic of boat between the between continents. I have friends in, in Japan. I have friends in, Aust in Australia. I haven't seen them for years now. Not Japan, but Australia. This is very sad to think that saving the world means you can't move. I, I'm, I'm, I think that one has to invent the way to move without ruining the world. Yeah, but exactly. not you don't go in the aeroplane. There's the yes, city. not these aeroplanes. Invent other aeroplanes yeah, without yeah. petrol. Without, but they, we are able to do that. I'm sure humanity. I mean, science is was would have been able to do that already now if the if the money had gone yeah. to that. Well, see. Yeah. So it, I, I don't think. I think that we we might 
not traveling is one thing. I must say it makes me so sad, so sad, the idea not to travel. But there's one thing we could do also is, is oblige people to put the money where it has to be put. In terms of research, yeah. That's not renounced. We, we, I was made by travel, uh, traveling. I, you know, this, it's. No, I can't imagine. Yeah, yeah, I can't imagine all these young people not, not traveling. Not, mm. of course, by train, by bike, by whatever they want. But there are some something, called, some things called oceans. So. How do we, you know, so Oats. let's invent, let's invent ways of crossing the ocean. Yeah. But, but they just not take ruin the oceans. <coughs> uh, they just take time. Boats are yeah. just slower. Yeah. And boats that carry passengers are not like the big tankers or the big fishing boats. No, no, of course. But it, listen, everyone has, to do, everyone has to do their own thing. I feel very strongly about it because I met a scientist and I believed what he said. And I thought I had to change something. It was nothing public. It was in my private life. And I thought, what change could I make? And I rather like trains anyway. So I said, well, I could I love make the change to not fly. And I do these really long journeys, 10 hours to work in the morning. <laughs> That's okay. You know, it's not so bad. And I, I learned a lot about um, how travel is a really beautiful thing. But wasn't it that Gandhi said, the fastest the human soul can move is in a train. Any faster than that is not possible for the soul to move. And he's right. A plane is like really too fast. That's why I was talking about a balloon. Dirigeable. Comment ça veut dire to dir dirigeable? Um, le, that you can steer. Le, le diri le, tu sais, les grands dirigeables. Like oh, yeah. Oh, um, a Zeppelin. Zeppelin. A Zeppelin. A Zeppelin. Zeppelin. The, great. The, You'd be great with your goggles with the Zeppelin. Le Zeppelin, c'était quelque chose d'extraordinaire et ça a été tué parce qu'il y a eu cet accident épouvantable. On raconte, on parle quand même de l'importance. Not at all. Okay, there's a whole big long list of things we haven't talked about. We haven't talked about the way both of you, in your different ways, have approached the story of Iphigenia, for example. Um, the, mm. the, the tradition, or the, the, the question that's at the heart of Iphigenia. Both, I've, I've had the privilege of seeing both of your versions of that story. But there's one, <clears throat> one thing which I'm, I'd like to suggest we also talk about, and that's um, because you mentioned it the other day, Ariane, or yesterday in your lecture, uh, the other Kyoto Prize lecture, and that's Arnold Wesker. Um, both of you, I believe, have spent some time with Arnold Wesker stuff. Katie, have you not? No. Ah, okay. I misunderstood. I misremembered then. Okay. Arden. Let's, let's start with. Maybe you're thinking about right? John Arden. Sorry? Maybe you were thinking about John Arden, same generation, no. but no. I know. Okay. No, I thought you'd done. I... Sorry? No, no, it's fine. It's I, I guess it's it's a question of all right, going back to the beginnings of your careers when you were working, when, when if you like somebody or a play took you somewhere that you didn't know you would go. Because it's one of the questions that's come in from the audience. Is there a moment that's a turning point in your sort of working career, whether it was a particular play or a particular author um, who, who took you somewhere or a particular production that took you somewhere that you didn't expect? I'm only bringing up Wesker because I mis misremember your story, Katie. Sorry. But also because, Ariane, you mentioned Arnold Wesker's Kitchen, and we were talking mm -hmm. about food earlier, <laughs> as a play that was sort of important in, in, your, in your trajectory. Yes, I mean, we I've, I've actually, I feel very ungrateful to, to Arnold because I, we owe him a lot. I mean, we were really nothing. We were a little company, totally unknown, penniless, without a place, etc. And I, I, you know, I, you know I, I heard about the success of the kitchen, I read the play. And I wrote to him saying, we are penniless, we are unknown, we are nobody. Please let us put your play on. And he said, yes. He said, yes. He just had a, a, a you know, a triumph in London, etc. 
he could have given his play to very famous directors all over the world. I don't know why he said yes. And this play was for us the moment where everybody, we, we, it was our, comme on dit, la notre venue au monde, vraiment. Yeah. Hein? C est, c est... Yeah. Et, um, et, mais il faut, il faut dire que j'aime cette pièce. Cette pièce est extraordinaire. C'est vraiment, elle est extraordinaire. Je suis moins, moins fanatique du, du reste de son, de son œuvre. Mm -hmm. Mais je, je veux absolument, là, puisque je crois qu'il y a des... Puisque c'est des, des Britanniques qui, qui nous écoutent. Mm -hmm. mais, mm -hmm. I want to, to really... Je veux rendre hommage à Arnold parce que euh, nous lui devons beaucoup. Beaucoup, beaucoup. I'm very grateful to him. Mm -hmm. Very. And so, as you just said, it's it's largely well. It's not only British people. We have a kind of global audience sometimes for these shows. But let's let's finish for the last few minutes. Um, let's come home, as it were, to Oxford. Um, you've narrated on a number of occasions, Ian, your sort of uh, the calling, if you like, that you got here in Oxford um, at the Oxford Playhouse, yes. uh, or just after the Oxford Playhouse, um, and. Um, Both of you, uh, Katie, I'm not going to say your calling came from the Oxford Playhouse either, although, yeah, all right, <laughs> less clear. But um, before then, it was before then. But okay. yeah. I guess, so we're going backwards through your lives, if you like. Um, Oxford for you, Katie, what were, is, is that a moment? Are we going to go back to the story about uh, when you became aware that sexism was around you? Did that already happen in Oxford? Um, or was it later? Um, is there a? Is there a? It was later. Is there anything about making theatre in Oxford that you remember? Oxford was very good. I didn't ever feel entitled to belong there, so I always felt that I was provisional, and I was always waiting for the big hand to come on my shoulder and go, "Oh, we have made a dreadful mistake. You must go home now." That's what I was always expecting. I never belonged. And, and I think back to it, you know, some of the worst bits of it were the Bullingdon Club, which is a drinking club. Mm -hmm. And Boris Johnson is my contemporary. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember those thuggish men drinking and being bullish. But anyway, so I've, I have a very uncomfortable and un, unsure relationship to Oxford. I, I never felt entitled. I never felt I belonged there. But I had a great time making things there. Um, and uh, uh, and I really am blessed for all the great people I met there. My my dearest friend Lucy, mm -hmm. who I who I met there, you know, you, you deepest friends. But um, and it was great to to make things there. But I felt an interloper, definitely. But I, how was it for you, Ariane? Oh, it was I was foreign, so but so and <clears throat> and uh, i was there i was not really in the university i was at st clair's so it was a little college for foreigners to learn english so my father had that very very i never i never thank him enough to you know, to send me there for one year to 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 have uh, the best english i could get and i realized that if i was there just to learn english i would get bored so i You know, I, so I registered at Oudes, you know, Oxford University Dramatic Society, and at ECC. Oh. And <laughs> I started, you know, I started doing things there. I started oh, uh, not acting a lot because my, my accent was not good and I'm not an actress, but, you know, doing props and, and uh, well, and I met very kind people too. Very, I met John McGraw there because I was helping on this show Bloomsday, and I met Ken Loach because he was directly. He was just he was just leaving university, and he made you know I played in a, one of his of his play, and and really one day coming out from the the playhouse, from a rehearsal of Coriolanus, which was not to be a good, very good production, but it was lovely to be in it anyway. And um, I, I really said, I mean, I went out in the bus and realized that this was going to be my life. So it was very, very important for me. For me, it was sort of a year in paradise. But knowing that it was only a year and that, um, I, and, that, that and knowing that by chance, I was making the best of it without, you know, mm -hmm. without 
not even knowing what I was, I was doing, but I was, it was, no, it was heaven. It was magnificent. And, um, and it's very bizarre because I, I, then I went and did my life. I forgot all about Oxford. And then when I came back for an occasion, and then I fell in love with Oxford again. Mm. Very strange. No, it's a very beautiful place. It's a beautiful place. Really beautiful. It's a dangerous place. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. We're nearly at nine o'clock. Yes. I don't know how much long... Sorry? We're going to turn into a pumpkin. Oh, right. Yes, we're going to turn into a pumpkin into a sepoy. Um, uh, but I... Before we get to nine o'clock, I just wanted to, um, well, first of all, say that um, it would be so wonderful to do this again. Um, uh, as the French saying goes, en présentiel, in other words, in real life. En chair, um, en chair et en os. In, ne dis pas présentiel, c'est un mot affreux. En chair okay. et en os. I'm so sorry. I won't say presential ever again. In flesh and bone, <laughs> in, fle in, in real embodied presence. Um, voilà. Uh, it would be great to have this conversation uh, again, in whether it's in Oxford or in uh, in Paris. Um, I think it's for me, it's been just such a privilege to um, listen in on you two talking. And I know from there have actually been very few questions. Um, most of them you've answered as you've gone along, in fact. So I haven't wanted to interrupt and say, well, what's the key moment and blah, 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 because it's been part of the, the, the debate between you anyway. Um, it's been a real treat. It's been amazing um, to listen to the two of you talk about craft, talk about questions. You said at one stage, Ariane, now we're talking about all sorts of things. And yes, that's been the joy of it. It really has. Even um, Zeppelin. <laughs> even Zeppelins. Yeah, You're doing been. the Zeppelin with your goggles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the North, yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. Um, and I just want to thank you both so much for the generosity that you've shown uh, to each other, but also to the cause, if you like, the cause of, of making theatre and of thinking politically through theatre, with theatre, about a whole range of different questions. Um, uh, obviously, Ariane, I should give you the last word if you'd like the last word, but maybe you've already said it. I don't know. I think I've said it. I just, I just will... We'll invite Katie to come to Paris and see our theater again and, and meet Hélène and have, have, and have good food together. Yes, I'd love that. Thank you very much. I'm going to do that as soon as this wretched COVID has gone. I'm on that train. <laughs> OK. Right. And can we, rem you, so you said right at the beginning, Ayanna, as to when the next show is going to open. Can you remind us when that is, you know, God willing and September. all the rest of it? September. September. OK. Yes. OK. So yeah, Katie, maybe you and I can get on the train in September and go and see it. Um, we'll see. Um, okay, there's going to be some slides now, um, uh, as it were, to end uh, the, this evening's uh, conversation again as part of the as part of this double act where we're we're presenting it both through the through Torch and uh, the Kyoto Prize. Um, and I suppose I should again formally. Uh, acknowledge Ariane that all of this is possible at least partly tonight because you have been awarded this amazing prize um, and all honor to you for that um, and thank you both again for an amazing uh, conversation um, between the two of you uh, good night everybody else thank you for listening um, and uh, we'll see you again soon good night good night good night ciao Et moi, je dois partir aussi. Voilà. <rire>